more readable or to explain what are the things we are we have like written inside the code okay because maybe if down the time uh, timeline a few years later you will leave the company but the code would be there right and who would be replacing you they should know what is the things are there what are the what you were tried to do in that particular class or in that particular method like that so to explain out that what are the things happening inside that we usually use the comments that is one use to explain to make it more readable to make it more understandable by others that is one thing single pointer and the second pointer which is also important as i think sri said that that it is to comment out some particular line so what happens in real life you are executing hundreds of lines of code and there is a way uh, like for some reason you don't want a particular line or some bunch of lines not to be executed what you will do you will put them in the comment because comment doesn't get executed okay that's the thing and so how do we give a comment that is another question so i'll share my screen let me know once my screen is visible visible right for everyone yes yes, yes. yeah, yeah. it's visible yes, cool so as you guys can see when i was using this the previous day i give a comment here i give a comment with the double slash okay so there are two ways to give a comment one is double slash another is this one okay so both has their own uh, like highlights on use and on parameters so what is this one the 15th line one so this double slash means whatever i'll put behind it behind this double slash would be considered as a comment for that particular line now i'm writing anything in this line okay let's go ahead with anything whatever i'm lying in like writing in the 15th line everything would be considered as a comment whatever i am writing okay that would be a comment so i have totally commented 15th line but if i write previous to it that is okay see it is not coming as green it's still working so behind that double slash everything would be commented so like it may be a little bit confusing because you may read somewhere that double slash means the whole line is commented it's only when whole line is commented like after this sign not before okay and this is another way to comment any out anything out so you can give the slash and star within the opening and in the closing star slash so what is the benefit of or the difference of this this is a single line marker okay like it it can only work in the single line like i am writing here but if i give a enter it's not working anymore it's a code again that's why it's a single line marker but i want to comment everything from this line to this line there is a possibility right bunch of lines i want to do i don't want i'll not go like this right it would be like time wasting for me like doing three lines all together so what i'll do i'll just put like star uh, sorry slash star and at the last here i'll put the star slash it's not happening oh it's it happened actually i'll just make it like this so you see only these three lines are commented so this is another way to comment it out okay so if you have multiple lines to comment you will use this one and if you have one single line to comment obviously we'll, you are going to use the double slash any doubts cool now coming to the important topic where is it yeah we did the comments variables cool so what is a variable guys it holds the value of a it's it like a container of data numbers floating variable can store the data it is a memory like block it's like a container hold the data yeah among all these answers at the first only vidas said that it is a container so if what is a variable if anyone asks you what is a variable you can say that it's a container to contains the data okay that's it one single line answer yeah. which will solve everything it's a container so basically uh, if you relate through our concepts like 
we have areas, we have houses, we have homes, like rooms. Inside the rooms, we have different types of containers, right? To keep different types of things. Like we'll keep the kitchen items in different types of containers. We'll keep our pen and pencils in a container. We'll keep all our books and diaries in a container. So different types of items needs to be contained in different types of containers. So containers are nothing but variable, okay? So I can store like, when I'm saying that there is a variable, okay, I'll share my screen one second. Uh, so when I'm saying that there is a variable like int i equals to 10. Int i equals to 10. So I am saying uh, to the compiler boss, create a container in the name of i and put the value 10 inside it. Okay, that's the point. So ignore the int as of now. So what I'm saying that any for any language, it's not about Java, any programming language, you'd be coming through variables are nothing but a container. If you are writing Python, you don't have to even write this int, right? You can just directly say i equals to 10. So what it will do, it will uh, create a container of space and it would be named as i, it would be called as i and it would be given the value of 10 inside it. That's a variable thing for you. Now, how this is working? Now, if you see that when we are trying to get a container for our daily use, so just suppose I have one kg of rice and someone has 100 gram of rice. So both our container sizes would be same? No. No, right? Because I have more quantity, I may need a bigger container. If someone has a smaller quantity, he or she may need a like smaller container. There's a way of doing things, correct? Yes. So here also Java needs to understand that boss when I'm saying I equals to 10. Okay, I'm saying I equals to 10. So that means there should be a container which is called I and the value of 10 would be put there. Correct? This selected area means that much that there would be a there would be a container called I and the value of 10 would be put inside it. Now, Java needs to un understand how big the container it needs to store the 10. Correct? Yes. That it should be a bigger, large container, it should be a medium container, it, could, it can be a very small container. So, whatever container it needs, that's why the data types are there. Okay. So, if you go through, there are actually two types of data types. Two types of data type. One is primitive. One is primitive and another is non-primitive. Non-primitive. Non -primitive. Yeah. So primitive data type and non-primitive data type. So what is a primitive data type? Anyone? Primitive data type is like a... In, in it is yeah. already developed by the developers already. Data types. Predefined in Java. Primitive data types like uh, immutable. It's not changed. Once assigned, it's like not changing. It, it primitive data types are immutable. Are you sure? Mutable. 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 Okay, correct. Mutable. It's like example like int, float, uh, boolean. C. You guys said everything correct. I'm not saying you guys said anything wrong, but the most important pointer for the primitive data type is primitive data types are predefined, has a predefined area. Okay, how much storage it's gonna get. Primitive data types are those data types which has a predefined storage capacity or predefined size of them. You can say size of them. That's why they are called primitive data types. Non primitive data types doesn't have any predefined size. That's why they are called non-primitive data types. Primitive data types, as you guys are saying, everything like byte, short, long, int, float, double, char, bull, everything is primitive data type. Okay. And everything, if you has, if you guys have gone through that chart, everything has their own particular size, correct? The size are predefined. Who defined it? Developers. That's what I'm saying. Directly or indirectly, you guys are saying correct that boss, uh, whenever I'm uh, discussing about the primitive data types, 
so those particular data types are already predefined by the developers correct but developers has defined what developer has defined their sizes developers has defined their sizes just a minute guys so developers has defined their sizes that's what the primitive data types are basically those data types where the sizes has been predefined it's predefined with the java library correct and they are mutable okay these three pointers are enough to discuss mutable means when a particular value is assigned to this any of these data types you can change it again and again not an issue so now primitive data types as i said they have a defined size defined sizes so what we do in our household also that's true right when we ask our parents boss where i can keep my uh, this this much big of things they show us out to a particular container uh, that container would be fit go and put it there right in our childhood we used to put like in as our parents instructions that you can put these things in that container you can put these things in that that container so just like that the developers are also given an idea boss this is a small bucket this is a medium bucket this is a large bucket like that according to your data size you can put the things inside the container whatever is suitable okay now what will happen if i put larger things in a small box it will not fit right like i want to i want to fit a very big thing inside the smaller box is it possible no right so it will overflow so just like that java will also throw the error so if you see here oh, where is my mouse one sir ha huh, got it so i have given int i equals to 10 till now our definition was there would be a container named i where that value of 10 would be assigned now we know the container size also because of this int what is the size there would be a container of four bytes i think I'm, if i'm not wrong there would be a yes, container yes. of Four, four bytes, bytes. Huh. four bytes, and the value of ten would be assigned to it. Getting my point? How data types are helping? Yes, sir. So now what I did here, I created one more container named J. The container size is two bytes, and I'm keeping the value of ten. Getting, getting my point. What I'm saying? others yes sir i'm yeah, just yeah. getting only one one yes yes sir yes, yes. others videsh chinna yes sir. please Ado. repeat one more uh, time you can yes, say sir. that out aloud like without it. even saying my name saying your name right come out yourself and say that repeat no issues so what i'm saying see any time you in java you guys are working or maybe while going through the data types you have seen this line very often int a equals to 10 correct this is a very common line for java any time so what type of line this is this is a variable declaration okay i'm declaring a variable that's why it's called variable declaration so till just suppose you don't have any idea about data types just you are studying about variable so this would be your idea correct that i have a variable called a where i'm storing a value of 10 correct yes or no yes yeah yes. yes now as i said so every particular uh, container we are talking about containers here containers has different sizes right so which particular items smaller items should go to smaller uh, containers the bigger uh things should go to the bigger containers that's the process right so here how java will identify that or how we will tell java that boss save it in that size of container okay we have to define it for java so what we are doing they have given some predefined container sizes those are called primitive data types okay so there are i think around 8 if i'm not wrong 8 or 9 maybe yeah 8 sir 8 so integer four bits right so here you can see right these are the data types so we have this many data types and among them we can put any type of things now i am using int 
so i am saying java that was create a container called a which will have a size of 4 bytes and will put a value of 10 inside it this is the meaning of this line of variable declaration clear what is a variable declaration and how it means so yes, it's yes. saying container of 4 bytes called as a has the value of 10 inside it clear now Yes. Yes, yes. 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 Now, if someone comes and tells you that short p equals to one second, so what happened? What I try to do here? I try to do the same thing that. Okay, let me copy this. Okay. it would be 2 bytes now right short is 2 bytes yes sir 2 bytes called b and the value of that whatever the random number i have put there 2 bytes has the value inside it so this value is giving error now why because this particular data what short whatever, can store only the i mean the short Uh, 100 numbers only. I mean, three uh, three 327 numbers only. Uh, it doesn't store. I mean, uh, up to the lakhs and all that. It can store up to the hundreds level only. Correct. So short has a smaller smaller memory, right? Two bytes. So if you put like the school tiffin box we used to get in our school, right? In that small container, if I want to put my months of ration of rice, chawal, is it possible? No, right? So same thing. If it's a smaller container, I can't put a bigger number, right? So that's why you have to use intelligently, like which particular container you want in which particular condition, according to your data. Okay, that's the point, and that's why the data types are predefined. That's called they are primitive data types. Now, but the point is here also, like you will say, like if I am then giving the ten where I am writing in, I could have gone for the byte, right? It's a very small. But day-to-day -day life, actually, mostly would be using only this many int, long, float, double, boolean, char. Byte and short will not come to you for day-to-day -day life. Even for the smallest number, you will go for the int. That's a practical use, but you have to know. Like you can't help it because the interviewer may ask you any time. So what you have to do, you have to remember this. These two columns has to be like totally on your palm. Okay. Byte is one byte, short is two bytes, int is four bytes, long is eight bytes, float is four bytes, double is eight bytes, boolean is one bit, and character is two bytes. You can't miss it out. Okay, you have to put it. Now we'll see everything one by one. Now there is a byte, right? Data type called called is byte. Its size is also one byte, and storage is till 128 to 127. Interviewer will ask you no. They will not ask you. Okay. So you do may don't have to remember this. For short, there is the size of two bytes, and it goes till thirty-two thousand. Okay, plus minus both side thirty-two thousand. For int, you may remember that it goes till ten digits. That would be enough. Okay, like you can see, it's ten digits, like two million. Sorry, not million, two trillion, I think, or billion. Billion it is. Yeah, two billion. and for long it goes more than that like the highest number you can consider that would be inside the long then float is for the fractional numbers you can see 6 to 7 dig decimal digits double is for 15 decimal digits i'll show you everything don't worry and boolean is for the true and false like whoever is from the computer science background and all they will know the truth table right the true and false thing and char is a single character of your keyboard i'll come to that also char is very important now what is we want to do we want to do the byte so byte b will do the same thing so it can store anything between the hundreds right so 30 is very good but if i try to make it 300 will it be okay no because it goes till 127 around that so it can store till minus 128 or minus 128 to plus 127 i think 
so it can store easily now short short is also for full number only okay short s equals to i'll go till 10000 all good it can go till 32000 i went till 10000 okay now we have the int int i equals to let's not go to the limited one six nine This is the int. It can go till 2 billion. I went till 1.5 billion. So this is the int. Int is also for full number. OK, now we have long long L equals to uh, you can type anything here. Doesn't matter. Yes, and you will get an error. Why any idea why? We have to keep that literal L in there. And also we should cut short the numbers. Ending the number, we have to keep the okay, it's too long. Yeah, yes. right. I don't know, even I am not sure why we're giving that L, but like as I told you, right? Some things you have to just remember for long, you have to give L, and there would be another one coming for that. Also, you have to give that. So, this so we use this four data types for the any type of full number, okay. So if you are going for the long, remember at the last you have to give the cell. If you don't remember, compiler will make you remember with a syntax error. But these four types are for the any type of full numbers. Okay, like no decimals and nothing. Okay, so these are the four data types. Now in day to day life, you'd be using in any of these two. Okay, even if you are storing 30, you'd be going for integer. And if you are storing more than lakhs, automatically you will go with the long, even though it has the capacity to store the lakhs. Now for the decimal ones, we have others. Float f equals to again error. F. The same way, yes. F. You have to put a f, again. and that's in capital, okay? Not a small f. You have to put a capital f. Remember this also. It's small is also fine. Yes, Amitabh. Small, small is also fine, Amitabh. We can all okay. we can put small also. Okay, maybe I haven't put ever. I haven't checked. That's a okay, good thing okay. to learn. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then we have another one that is double for the more. Sorry, I gave capital. Double D. We can put more of bigger decimal numbers here. So we can put like this. So this is double for the decimal numbers. And for the decimals, mostly we'll go with the float. Very rare scenario, we'll have to deal with double, OK? So you don't have to worry about it. Now this is a double, and we have the Boolean. So he is gone, right? What is the problem? They type the whole boolean. I forgot. No. So the data type of boolean, I just give a variable name of Q because the B was already taken. And I can put anything between true and false. But remember the true and false because it comes inside the reserved words of the boolean value. We don't have to give the inverted comma. OK, remember this. Even though it's uh, like the collection of the alphabets you are typing there, you don't need to give any inverted comma. If you give invite comma, that would not be considered. That would be becoming a different type of data type. OK, it would be a string. So while you are typing any value for the Boolean, the same way is like Boolean X equals to if you're writing false, don't give invite commas. If you give invite commas, it would be wrong. OK, it would be an error. So don't give any inverted commas. Even though it's a collection of the alphabets, OK? And then we have the cat. Cat is the most important, maybe for some. Sorry. So cat is more important. Why? Because sometimes you have to use this as a like condition cases, like when you will have some conditions to match or some uh, loop to work on. So these things cat will come into the play. Okay. And what is cat? So cat means character. That's it. 
so what does the character do whatever you see in this keyboard okay in your keyboard whatever the things you can see everything is a cat even if you are seeing a comma that is also a cat like cat d d is gone r equals to if you are seeing this brace this is also a cat everything whatever you are seeing in your keyboard everything is considered as a cat and care means characters and these characters have a value of their own okay that's called ascii value so if i am saying that there is a capital a and there is a small a for us both are same okay like it's only upper case and lower case but for compiler or for jvm or for any programming language to process they will not be processed as the same value this capital a has a different ascii value the small a has a different ascii value how can you remember it so we don't remember it basically we define it every time we need to check so ascii value you can just search as this there would be the n number of images available and you can see here one second i'm trying to zoom in better one would be yeah i think this will work see capital a has a value of 65 you can see here right small a has a value of 97 so when you are saying the character a capital a that means that particular integer is storing the value of 65 and a particular integer is like saving the value of 97 so ascii values are important i told you right some conditions would appear some conditional wise like you have to match this capital a or small a is equals or not or if not equal what to do so this type of things that's when like we use the characters but why it's important there are two concepts uh, regarding this character first one is ascii value that was every particular element has an ascii value and it would be different from each other okay every time it's a unique value are given to this particular characters and the second thing which is related to this that anything you see in the keyboard people may say you does this particular brace is a character yes it's a character does this particular uh, maybe is it a character yes it's a character just a second guys cool so this would be the characters okay so these are the all primitive data types and as i said like primitive data types means where the sto like storage capacity or the container capacity has been predefined by the developers or by java so byte is like we know one byte short is two bytes int is four bytes long is eight bytes so this is all the integer float doesn't have any option for one and two like the decimal pointers doesn't have any option for one byte and two bytes it starts with four bytes it goes till eight bytes then you have billion boolean which is one bit and character is two bytes okay so these are the data types you have to remember and it's a must remember like interview me ask you any particular data type and say what is the storage capacity for this this is possible okay so don't forget this uh, i have a doubt uh, you said primitive data types are mutable uh, when yes. the, when these are all predefined how can they be uh, changed no mutable means it doesn't change the storage capacity okay mutable means i can change the value like here integer i equals to this correct so yep. there is a possibility then again i can say i equals to 40 yeah it overrides and takes the latest value as yes. right? yes. yeah. so there is always a chance that i can change the value to this even i can say that whatever i was so i plus 60 <laughs> So anything is possible okay yep so yep. you can always change the value for this it's not the changing of the storage capacity it's the change of the value which, what is assigned right. to that particular containers yeah okay. so the variables okay. value can be changed and that's why they are called mutable and so primitive data types if anyone ask as i said there are two characteristics of them first is their storage capacity is predefined like the storage is predefined there are different types of data types of primitive they have different sizes also 
and the other one is they are mutable which is very important they are mutable now with the same opposite characteristics there comes the <laughs> non primitive data types so non primitive data types has the diverse ca 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 like capabilities first of all it's not mutable it's not mutable at all and the second thing is their sizes are not predefined by java whatever the size the user needs user can create one okay that's their capacity ha uh, that will come to this later let's uh add i will come to this later so how the non pivot data is the most one which you guys were going to use that would be the string okay string means sorry string means that whatever we write in the double inverted comma the sentences the collection of alf alphabets okay it has to be the collection of alphabets it can be a single character also but if it's written inside the double inverted comma it would be considered as a string like string s s is done oh uh v string v equals to double inverted comma w this is also okay w is a single character right i could have given the char value correct yes but here because i am writing inside the double inverted comma that means it's positively a string if i am writing in a single inverted comma that would be considered as char like here only i am trying to do the same thing we'll see there is an error and it's saying that change the v the variable to character because i have given a single quote but if i make it a double quote it would be okay no issues so What string is the does that make when we give only single alphabet in string uh... it would be an error right yes uh, because no, we decided string a single alphabet and we we have given an, a, a double quote the same thing we can store in char giving a single quote I mean, how yes. does the machine understand? So the machine understands like that. That here, okay. Let me make it. This is yeah. a data type. So for machine, it's just A, simply A, nothing else. Okay, it's alphabet A. So if you ask to print it out, even it will print out the A. For here also, it will print out the A. But for machine here internally, it has its ASCII value to compare. Okay, ASCII value to be comparable. but here it's nothing like that okay most probably if i'm not wrong uh we can do some of them for got characters i'll uh, come back uh, to this okay okay i'm um, the what i'm asking is uh, if we print a, ca a character a in single quotes giving a char mm -hmm. as a data type it will mm -hmm. print a we don't find any difference even mm -hmm. in string if we are giving a single alphabet in double quotes it mm -hmm. will print a uh i mean mm -hmm. do we find any difference uh, when we give a single alphabet in string or a character you might not uh, get it instant uh, like yeah, from our from our point of view it might not be that much comparable okay or actually there is a function which i'm missing maybe for characters the ascii values can be used um just i'm forgetting how we can use it okay So yeah, maybe I'll come back just tomorrow. Yeah, actually, if you ask the value as sixty-five, it would print A in the output. I have seen somewhere. I know. Ha! It will print out A only. But ASCII values yeah. can be used. That's what I'm saying. So if we okay. see the use of the ASCII value, it would be more clear. That's why I said I'll get back to you on this. But sure. the point sure. is, whenever you are saving saving as a character, always it will go through the ASCII value of it. Okay. For machine, it's an ASCII value which it would be comparing. But for string. Okay. there is nothing inner side to it it's just you have given a that means a nothing okay they would, they would just uh, print whatever we have given that's it it won't ha and uh, for characters the ascii values can be used for our for user reference that's one how to use the ascii value i'm forgetting that's why i'm saying okay. i don't okay, think we can no sum it up i forgot okay so string uh, v whatever we are saying so as i said string would be the like non primitive data type which you guys are going to mostly use like the most used that is string and why i am saying it's a non primitive first of all there is no capacity limit to it like i can write whatever i want inside it right anything i want i can write inside it no string limit no size limit nothing and so then how the sizes are getting comprehended here the sizes are getting comprehended as whatever i have written inside it 
So compiler will see how much how much space it's getting occupied, and that much size it would be giving to V. So it's kind of a elastic uh, storage. Okay. So whatever you put inside it, much. yes, it extends as much as you are putting inside it. So that's why they are called non-primitive types. Any non-primitive types has that capacity to extend as much as needed for the user. Any size limit is not defined. Like after a limit of integer, if I put more numbers here, it will throw an error, right? Because it's not getting the capacity to store anymore. But whereas for this string and uh, other non-primitive data types like add a class, even for the class, you guys are seeing the class, right? I'm writing anything inside it and I can go on and on and on. I can show you some classes which will be going till 3000, 5000 lines. Still 10,000, 15,000 lakhs of lines is also possible. Nothing. The class is extending its area as much as needed. Like if I have uh, three rooms, my house would be small. If I have five rooms, my house would be a little bit bigger, obviously, right? So class is also an uh, like example of non primitive data type. Even class, interface, array, string, there would be multiple ones, but the most used ones, you'd be using the string one. Because day to day life with this variable, string is going to come to your life. Okay, even we wrote the hello world, right? Hello world also wasn't string. If you remember, so what we did last day, we did like this, correct? Hello world is inside the double quotes. That's why I'm saying anything inside the double quote is considered as a string. Remember that. So hello world was as a string. So now if I don't want to do this, what I'll do, I'll string uh, value equals to double quote V. Escape sequence is coming. I'll show you that later. So I have given a value and I can just ask to print the value. OK, even if I run this. It would be giving the same thing. Hello world. Because and same way everything will happen. OK, it's not about only the string. It can happen for like integer I have given, right? So see so. I can give the I. See the same value. Yeah. And where I have done that one second. OK. I'll show you the immutable characters. I equals to I plus. 100. Why the primitive data types are mutable? You can see here. So in I, I have started with this number. So when when I printed it at first, you can see this is the value, right? right. Correct. Then I yeah. did that. That whatever the value I have, put hundred plus with it. Okay. Then I printed again. Yeah. The compiler understood the value needs to be changed. Again, the new value came into the picture. Okay. The same variable only. I'm going ahead with I and I and I. Now you might say why I'm not giving the int here again. OK, it's already declared because it's already declared. If you are saying that variable or that container is to keep oil, that would be always for oil. It's not going to go any maida or flour or any chicken to keep there, right? It will be always for the oil. Mm -hmm. So the same thing like this. Once I have declared this is an integer, the whole for whole till this method ends, method scope ends, OK? This method scope till this method scope ends till here. I means integer. Okay. Yeah. Doubts guys. Yeah, and I, I mean if we give uh, this is something apart from integer. Uh, if we give huh. if we declare a character C uh, with a value 65, it would print uh, capital A. No. That's what I've, I've seen. Oh. Characters, I'll come back to you. Okay, even I'm not okay, sure. Okay. I'll just come sure, back to you. Sure, I just uh, reminded. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, no problem. Anything else, guys? Anything else, guys? No. No. We want to. No. Sorry. 
Yeah, hi. Uh, if you want to change the data type in between uh, for the same variable, is it possible? Uh, that is data type casting. We'll come to that tomorrow. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you mean to say that right now I have the i is an integer. So if I yes. want to change it to i value is like. By sorry. That is type casting. Before one like this, right? You can see it's already yeah. throwing error. So we'll come to this tomorrow. That is data type casting. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Nothing.